Miss Claire and I'm a teaching artist with Louisville Visual Art. I am here to talk to you today about some of the elements of building your water tower project. So we're going to talk about different ways to construct it um, and we're also going to talk about different ways to decorate. So first things first, we need a tower. Now if you have an empty paper towel roll or you can even use uh, toilet paper rolls if you need to have a tube. Um, that's great, but if you don't have that going around or you don't have one of those in your home or collected, that's okay too. I'm gonna to show you an alternative to that. So this is a tower that I have previously built and it is a paper towel roll inside that's empty and then um, I decorated it with some colored paper. But if you don't have that, an option is to take a couple pieces of lighter weight copy paper and use those together for strength. So I'm gonna say, We'll see how two feels rolled up together. And then I'm just gonna secure it with some tape. Because we wanna have strong bonds, which is part of what we're gonna talk about today, but also it's not gonna to need to withstand all that much pressure. So that's something to think about. So this seems pretty secure, but I think just in case I'm gonna use a third piece. So I think, see what the thickness of your paper is. If you're using construction paper, it's gonna be a little bit heavier than white copy paper and you probably only need two sheets. Um, and the way I'm gonna attach this, I'm gonna use a little bit of tape. Now, word of warning, you don't need a lot of tape. You just need to use it strategically. Uh, the same goes for glue stick. So we'll talk about that when we get to the glue stick. So I've just got a couple pieces of tape here. I'm gonna stick them to the side so that you know, when I'm trying to tape it, I'm not, well, I'm trying to hold it and tape it at the same time. So I'm setting myself up by having a couple of pieces ready. All right, so I have my three piece of paper here and I am just gonna roll it. And then I am gonna put a couple pieces of tape on my roll. And I'm gonna put them around so I've got one up high and one in the middle. Oh, you probably can't see that because it's almost white on white. So this has made a pretty good roll. That seems pretty secure. So this could be the base of my tower also. So if you do not have a paper towel roll empty, um, you can just make one if you need to. So think about what you have at home and be resourceful. You could think about scraps of paper that you have. You could use some newspaper. Sometimes newspaper is really fun to play with, or you might have old magazines you can use to cut up and to use some of the pages. So use what you have around. Think about how you can recycle and be resourceful with what you have at hand. So this could be my tower. Now let's talk about ways to attach things. So the goal is to have a base with a tower on it. So a base and a tower. This is one that I have made that needs a little bit of TLC, but I think it's still showing you a lot of the things you need to see. So I've got my base and my tower, but we need to think about how we're going to attach the tower to the base. So if I was just going to take a tube and stick it on here, you know, if I put a little bit of glue here and just stick it on, there's not a lot of surface touching itself, so it can't create a really strong bond, and you might be frustrated at how it just really doesn't stay, no matter how much glue you use, no matter how much pressure you apply. So I'm gonna show you a couple techniques for connecting cardboard to cardboard. And the first one we're gonna talk about is a flange, which I will show you in a few minutes I already have on here. So let's bring out my board of shortcuts that I've created. All right, so let's get started. So this is a flange, and I'm not sure if you can see exactly, but it has some tabs around it. And then once we've cut these tabs, we've put glue underneath and attach it, and it is strong. This thing is never coming off of this board. So the tower that I have, I have a flange here. Like I said, it needs a little bit of TLC. Um, but what I would do is I would put a little bit of glue on each of these tabs, and then it's gonna to be touching a lot and it's gonna be a really, really, really strong bond. So I don't have to worry about my tower falling off. How do we make a flange? You might be wondering. Well, let me show you. Now, the first thing we wanna do is to probably draw a line. So I've already done that. And the reason I've drawn a line is so that I know to cut the tabs all to the same height. So it's really even. Because we wanna do a pretty good job of trying to be neat with our construction because then it's gonna look really neat in the end. So that's where we really need to pay attention to making things strong and making things pretty accurate. So that's something to think about. Don't wanna rush through it. So I'm gonna need a pair of scissors and a marker. So you can see I drew a line around here. It doesn't have to be perfect. 
Now I want to think about how many tabs I want to cut for this, the feet around the flange. So let's count how many I have on here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And it doesn't have to always be the same number. We don't want them to be super tiny. You're going to kind of regret having to glue like 25 little tiny feet around. But if you keep it under 10, you should be fine. So they don't have to be the same size. And you can make lines if you want to kind of give yourself a guide where to cut. All right, I think I've made about five or six on here, which I think is fine. And then now that we have our guide cutting lines, I'm going to cut this but I'm gonna stop when I get to my top line that goes around. It's telling me how far up to go. That also means that every time I cut these, they're all gonna be about the same height, which is gonna make my project look really neat. Okay, so now that it looks like this, what I can do is I can fold these out. And now I have made my flange. And so now, when I want to attach this, I can use white glue, or if you have a hot glue gun, or probably even a glue stick would work well. And something else to think about when we're using a glue stick is it's not about how much glue you put on, it's about the pressure you apply. So if I were gonna use a glue stick on here, I would apply some glue, and then really just push on each of these. So it's really about just the pressure that we're applying for the most part. So think about that. So that is a flange. That is how you can attach your tower to your base. Now, if you've made a paper tower, that is also fine. You should still be able to make a flange that would work well. So you can do the exact same thing. You want to draw a line around it and you want to make some lines up and down and then you want to cut those. But keep in mind that because this is not one piece, I made sure there was tape at the very bottom of mine so that if I cut it wasn't a bunch of papers kind of falling out. So think about that. So that is the first technique that I wanted to show you that's gonna be super helpful for connecting all of these pieces. So we've got a flange. Now, another, pro another piece that might be really helpful is a gusset. You can see it looks like a triangle. So what is the gusset? It is this sort of triangle shelf that is holding these two up. So if I'm making a corner or a right angle, like if I wanted to make a fence, this would be a great way to hold it up. I mean, this is not going anywhere. So think about if you want to put a triangle somewhere, it can really, really, really help to support a right angle. And a right angle is, of course, 90 degrees corner. So think about that. A gusset is really helpful. Now, another option for something is an L bracket. And that is going to be something pretty similar. So if we need to, say, put a tree down and we want it to stand upright, we could put an L bracket behind it. So we could attach it to the ground and then it would sit up. And I'm going to show you a little bit more of these. Um, a couple more ideas to keep things together using cardboard. We have a tab. Now, I'm going to show you how a tab works because I know it's a little bit harder to understand. So when I made a tab, I cut a line here and a line here. And so see, I have three pieces, right? Now, one piece is going to go this way and two are going to go the other way. So they're going to be opposite. And then, that is going to create some pretty strong strength. So if I kind of attach the glue underneath each of these tabs, it's similar to a flange. I am going to get a really nice upright piece of cardboard. So this could be another great way to have a fence or maybe if you want to put something that's going to be upright to decorate the grounds of your water tower, you can think about that. It's a really helpful resource. So that is a tab. And then another way to do something, and this might be something you're a little bit familiar with, a lot of game board uh, or board game pieces use this as a way to put together things, is going to be a slot. Now, I have two pieces of cardboard, and each of them have a hole cut in them. Now, when I put them together, you can see it goes about halfway up on each one. When I put them together, they slide all the way together, and now they're going to stand up. So I'm going to show you again how that was done. It's actually very, very, very simple. So I've got two pieces, and both the pieces have a cut going about halfway. And I'm going to put them together with the cut facing the same direction, right? Or facing, sorry, the opposite direction. So our slots go into the slots. And because it's about halfway, it makes this really nice shape. It stands upright. So these are all ways to connect stuff and they're pretty simple. So if you are trying to put something together, think about before you put it together, the way that might be best to connect it. Because 
you don't want to be spending time later trying to fix your project. It's a lot easier to build it strong so you don't have to worry about it. And you can move on to your decorative elements and move on to your theme and build cool stuff for it. So getting a really nice, solid and strong base is really important. It's the first step to building your water tower. So remember, a flange is a great way to attach um, your tower piece to your base. Something else to think about, when you're attaching your tower piece, you are gonna wanna make the flange probably first before you put paper on, but if you wanna decorate this paper, decorate it first. It's a lot easier to color while it's still flat before we glue it on a roll. And we're gonna to get to that in a little bit when we talk about decorative elements. So those are some of the ways that you can build your tower. Um, now let's move on to our decorative elements. So we wanna think about how we can use as few materials and colors as possible to really make something exciting. So I wanna show you my base and I wanna tell you what the theme of my project was. So I made something where I wanted it to be sort of tropical plant themed. So I was thinking Florida and flamingos and sort of like those wild tropical plants. That was my idea for a theme because I wanted it to be happy and a little funky. So I decided that I wanted to use, I made some paper flowers um, I used a column, which I'm certain that we're gonna talk more about. And then of course I created a flange and I made a base for it. Now, you can't probably tell because it's a little faded, but I marbled this paper. Do you know what marble is? You might have seen it before. A lot of times there's buildings that have portions that are marble, specifically old things, it's a really heavy stone. And you can kind of tell what it looks like because it has a vein going through it. So I'm gonna show you how I make a marbled paper that's super simple in case you wanna have a marbled effect on any part of your water tower. And it's something that we're gonna see a lot in classical architecture, which is a big part of our water tower and the history of our city's architecture. So I'm gonna show you how to do some marbling, but I also wanna point out to you the way that I have made grass. So I have used two colors of paper, that's it, but I got kind of creative with it. I decided to make some different line textures. So I think I used two colors of paper and I used three colors of marker. And this looks a lot wilder than that. So I kind of cut them up and almost made this interesting collage. So it's almost like a bunch of different kinds of grasses, but it's actually quite simple. I just have this kind of paper with some squiggles, some lines on this, and then the same color with some other squiggles. And then I got pretty creative about how I nailed it or how I glued it down. So think about how you can Think creatively. If you have an idea, I bet you can figure it out. I only use two colors of paper here. So the other thing to think about is how we're gonna decorate the grounds. So mine is pretty simple, but you might have a really different idea for yours. Maybe you want some fences. Maybe you want some three-dimensional um, bushes or plants or something of that nature. So as you're building things, think about what you can use. If you have construction paper, that's a really great material. Something that I do is I use a lot of paper, so I will save scraps so that I have a bin that I can go to that might have some scrap colored paper that I can use for something like this. So I pulled out a couple pieces of paper scraps today. Like if you're doing some other sort of project and you have some construction paper um, or even a drawing that you made that you just don't really like, it could be fun to cut up later for a project. So I pulled out a couple pieces of paper from my scrap bin. I got some green, I got some pink, and I got some orange. Now I thought this green could be really great to make some bushes. And if I was gonna make some bushes, you can see that I've got kind of some funky shapes here, but imagine what would happen if we just crumpled this paper into a little ball. We would have actually a pretty good bush shape. So I'm gonna try taking this, and I'm also getting to reuse this paper that might otherwise get thrown away. So that's pretty cool too. All right. I'm actually pretty happy with this bush. Okay, so I've got a little bush shape here. Maybe I want to trim it. Now, this might be the kind of thing I need white glue to hold on. But I can also think about if I wanted to have maybe some flowers in this, maybe I could use some markers and put some colored dots on here. Or maybe I could crumple up some tiny pieces of like this light pink to signify flowers. And then I could glue that on as well. So look how simple that was for me to give the impression of having a really nice little tree or a bush that I can put on my grounds. Really, there's no limit to your imagination. It's whatever you can think of, there's certainly a solution. Paper is a really versatile resource. So think about that. And think about having some cardboard around to use also to build some materials. Another really cool thing you can do that will create some really neat texture is to pull off one side of corrugated cardboard. 
So if you're familiar with corrugated cardboard, it's that heavy cardboard that like a lot of materials come in. If you order something in the mail, it's probably gonna come to you in a corrugated cardboard box. And it's called corrugated because on the inside, it's got this wavy, wavy section. But it's really neat looking if you're able to rip off one side of paper. So I'm just gonna show you an example of this. This is actually really, really thin corrugated cardboard, but it should still show us. So the stuff I'm talking about is, is this neat texture, which is pretty cool. I think that's something that you could use in your tower. It's almost like sometimes our buildings are really textured like brick or something like that. So think about the texture. If it's real texture, such as the inside of cardboard, or if it's just drawn texture, like the line work that I've used in my graphs. So think about how much texture is around us and think about mimicking some of that in your project. So to get to the inside of the cardboard, I am gonna try to just peel off one side of the paper. And sometimes it can be a little tricky, but it takes a little bit of, just gotta kinda dig in there, and pay attention to it. I might try going to a different corner. Oh yeah, I got a little piece here. Look at that neat texture. Maybe I wanna use this for my walls of my tower. Maybe I wanna use it somewhere on there as a decorative part. Maybe I wanna use it as a sign. It's up to you. I'm just gonna give you some ideas that I think is pretty neat to, to build with. So look at that. And I can even feel it, I can see it. It's like a nice wavy texture. It kind of looks like some industrial building materials too, which is kind of neat. So think about that. And that is just the inside of the cardboard. And that could be a cool texture to build with. All right, now I wanna talk a little bit about marbling paper. So if you've ever seen anything marbled, we've got these colored veins inside of them that's running through the rock. And a lot of classical architecture has parts that are made of marble. So I would like to show you how I create marble. Now to do this, you're gonna need some crayons. You might even be able to use markers for this too, or colored pencils. It's really about the way that we're gonna hold the utensil. And you can use any color of paper that you want. I have white paper here, but I have, and this one's kind of faint, but I've got white and yellow veins in this light pink marble. So if you have construction paper, go for it, because it can be really fun to have very colorful marble. So I'm just gonna choose a couple of colors, because I think typically two colors in a marble feels good. That feels like a good color combo. I'm gonna choose this pinky color, oh, red and I'm gonna choose this light green. So the way that I am gonna marble is I'm, I'm just really gonna hold this, and because crayons have this tip that's a little bit irregular, it's nice to kind of drag it along the side. By dragging it along the side, we're gonna get like an irregular sort of mark rather than a hard line, and that's gonna read a lot more like a vein in marble. So I'm gonna do this on top of my notebook a little bit more upright so you can watch how it goes since down here it's a little bit harder to see. So, remember I'm gonna use very much the side of my crayon, so sort of like this. And I'm gonna use it and I'm gonna kinda of turn it as I go to see how my mark changes. So we're almost making an abstract pattern here and it's really gonna resemble marble because of the way we're changing our movement. So if I'm using this red, just kinda of like, maybe I'm gonna Get a couple more, I'm just kind of twisting as I go down. You may not have seen that super well, but it kind of created a nice marble line. And you might find that different, different mm, crayons or utensils will give you something different. But you also can experiment. It's kind of neat to think about making a pattern of paper for your water tower. And I think part of the reason I also keep it to the side is so that I don't have as much control over my um, crayon. So it's gonna seem a little bit uh, more irregular, which will look like veins in marble. You can't see my green super well, it's a little bit blown out, but you can kind of get the idea. Do you see that marble that I've just created? I'm pretty happy with that. I think that looks pretty good. So now that I have created this marble texture and like I said, you wanna decorate anything that goes on the outside of your tower piece before you put it on because you're gonna be you're gonna be a little bit upset when you're trying to marble the paper and it's already on a pole. So remember, decorate the paper first. So I'm gonna use this now that I've made this new tube. And if I'd been thinking about it, I could have done a marble piece on the outside and then rolled the paper up because then it would have been part of it. But I didn't and that's okay. 
So the last thing I wanna show you as I'm attaching this marbled piece to my tower is the way that I use a glue stick because a glue stick is really about pressure. Like I mentioned, it's not so much about how much um, glue you're going to use, but it's how you apply your pressure to the glue. So I'm gonna use my all-purpose glue stick here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna allow it to overlap but I am going to just put a nice solid part of glue here uh, on the end. And then I'm really gonna try to hold it and push it and maybe count to 10. So anytime you're using a glue stick, I recommend counting to about 10 and holding something in place because it's gonna create a much stronger bond. And stronger bond is really like my catchphrase of the day because we're trying to create a project where we're starting it off right and connecting it properly so that later on we're not having to fix it because that's not for fun. So to do this, I'm gonna put a line of glue at the end and I'm gonna start rolling from here. So I'm gonna go across a couple times. My glue stick is clear, so you can't see it. But you saw I gave it a nice even coat across, but I didn't continue to go over and over and over it. So now I'm gonna roll this up and I'm really gonna be firm about it. Like I wanna make sure that I'm holding it and giving it good pressure. So now that I've attached this, I'm gonna kind of hold my hands and I'm gonna to count to 10. One, 1,000, two, 1,000, three, 1,000, four, 1,000, five, 1,000, six, 1,000, seven, 1,000, eight, 1,000, nine, 1,000, 10, 1,000. Now, it seems pretty sturdy and that's good. So I gave it a good amount of glue, but what I really did is I used pressure. So that's something that I want you to remember when you are using a glue stick is that it's more about how much pressure you apply than it is just smothering it in glue. So those are my tips for how to build a pretty successful water tower. Good luck!